Now at 11, a community in grief tonight after an unarmed father of three is shot and killed during a confrontation with an off-duty LAPD officer. Good evening, I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Cher Calvin. It happened in Ontario after what witnesses say was a fender bender that turned violent and ended in a shooting. The off-duty police officer was hospitalized and is recovering, but how an argument escalated into a shooting remains unclear. Rick Chambers live near the scene of that shooting with reaction from a stunned community tonight. Rick. Yeah, Micah, his friends tell us tonight that fighting and violence, this was out of character for Hugo Kachua. So the question is, what sparked it here on Thursday night? That question's still unanswered, though, because the police have not released a motive. Hugo Kachua was a husband and a father, shot and killed, though, last night here along 6th Street in Ontario. I heard three gunshots. So, uh, you know, you panic. This is not an area where you normally hear gunshots. In this dash cam video, you can see the two men on the right of your screen and faintly hear the gun going off. Those shots coming from a police officer. The only thing I confirm at this point is that he is LAPD and he was off duty at the time. The LA Times reports that the officer is a 29-year veteran of the department who has been on medical leave. Hugo Cachua, whose family claims he was not armed last night, had some sort of a run-in with the LAPD officer, possibly a fender bender, the two cars pulling to the curb here off Euclid. And then for some reason, their interaction escalated to violence in this busy street. We had multiple calls from residents nearby that heard the gunshots go off um, and people that were passing by in the area. Kind of scares me that it would go on to my neighborhood. Kelly Seha lives just up the block. It's so close to home that it could happen in nearby my house to the point where it makes me feel scared. 37-year-old Hugo Kachua is described by his friends as a soft-spoken guy, not prone to violence. So what triggered his deadly struggle is still a mystery. Yeah, we understand no charges have been filed yet in this case, but the California Department of Justice is now taking over the investigation. In Ontario, I'm Rick Chambers. Guys, I'll throw it back to you in the studio. Thank you, Rick. Good morning, and welcome to the Bad Apple Report. It's 7.30 a.m., bright and early, right here at home on the range. And you guys, the helicopters have been flying over just almost constantly. I'm not too far from a military base, and I'll tell you what, they're on the move. Lots of big choppers on the move. Okay. Can you feel it? You probably can't feel it, but I can feel it. They've been rattling me good. Okay, listen, you guys, we're going to have a great day today on the Bad Apple Report, and we are absolutely not going to get upset by these bad apples. We've got some updates on some um, stale bad apples, but we also have some fresh ones. And here's a fresh one. This NOPD officer arrested Friday, accused of being paid for details he never worked. Can you believe that, Borky Lees? Okay, let's see what happened to this guy. A New Orleans police officer was arrested Friday afternoon after investigators say he was paid for Walmart security details that he never worked. Christopher Jennings, age 42, was booked on six counts of theft, six counts of injuring public records, ooh, and a count of malfeasance in office following an investigation by the New Orleans Police Department's Public Integrity Bureau. Oh, no integrity there, buddy. Jennings, while employed as a senior police officer of the NOPD, allegedly failed to show up to six different details. He was scheduled to work at three separate Walmart locations across the city. Still, detectives say he got paid for the work. Oh, what a bad apple. Jen Jennings would call in his presence and sign off, but never be present for the shift itself. <laughs> Loser. Police alleged in court records, according to the records filed in criminal district court, the NOPD became aware of Jennings' alleged malfeasance when officers who showed up to the two-man detail told the officer of police secondary employment that they had worked alone. Well, they, they had to turn their buddy in after all. Ooh, they crossed the blue line. The Public Integrity Bureau and Internal Review Board says it used surveillance footage to confirm that Jennings wasn't present at the details. A license plate reader on Jennings' take-home patrol car Oh, this guy has a take-home patrol call. Revealed he was often in Jefferson Parish when he was supposed to be on duty in Orleans Parish. Phone records also tracked him outside of the location of the details the document said. Oh, it should be emphasized the officers Jennings was compensated for working the higher tier detail on all six occasions and abandoned his responsibilities by intentionally not showing up 
at the two-man detail, which potentially jeopardized the safety of the lone officer on site. Ooh, an affidavit said in the arrest warrant. Jennings is the second NOPD officer arrested this week. Corey Jones, we already talked about Corey, 35, is accused of using the fuel card in the department. Okay, these NOPD guys, dang. All right, we're not going to be too mean to them, all right? That's pretty funny, though. Jennings, loser. All right, let's move on, folks. Yeah, Mary, when that day happened, the victim's loved ones say that they thought that he had been dumped here by someone strung out on drugs, someone of that ilk. But months later comes the shocking news that the suspect is someone who actually took an oath and swore to protect Americans as an army, as a member of the army. According to military investigators, specialist Jonathan Kangley was already in a world of trouble at the time of this murder. On January 14th, he was just two days away from a court-martial for charges. He then went AWOL, and within hours, cab driver Nick Hokuma was stabbed and killed. Not only was I let down by somebody who swore to protect their civilians of their country, I was let down by that entire institution. Nicole Sharkody was Nick's longtime girlfriend. She told Como she thinks his murder could have been prevented if Specialist Lee would have been locked up as soon as he faced child sex charges. As soon as anyone said this man touched children, he should have been thrown in a barrel and thrown off a waterfall. Exact details of how Specialist Lee has been tied to Nick's murder are still unknown. Yet this disgraced soldier is already in prison for 64 years, convicted in absentia for those crimes. This guy used his position, his power, his status to deceive everybody. Nick was only 34 when he died. For her part, Nicole says she still does not know how to live her life without him. <sighs> Until I can stop crying whenever somebody asks me that question. I miss him. Now, other than murder, Specialist Lee also faces a charge of robbery. That's because after Nick's murder, he is accused and charged with stealing Nick's cab. Coming to you live from the South Center Mall tonight, Ryan Sims, Como News. And we have another fresh bad apple for you, folks. The GBI investigates after North Georgia Sheriff faces actual battery and other charges. Acting sheriff announced, what, he's not acting anymore? Oh, he's the acting up sheriff. He's in trouble. Chad Nichols, 45, faces public indecency. Whoa, he was acting up, if you know what I mean. Sexual battery and violation of oath by a public officer. Look at this guy. He's smiling like, I'm a dumb, ignorant idiot. Well, he is. Rabin County, Georgia. The Ray Bunn County Sheriff is now facing actual and other charges, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation said in a news release Friday. Chad Nichols, age 45, faces public indecency, actual battery, and violation of oath by a public officer, which is a felony. Whoa! According to the GBI, on Friday, May 24th, the Mountain Judicial Circuit District Attorney asked the agency to investigate an incident involving Nichols. Oh, they're like, really? We got to investigate an incident involving that guy. You know it's going to be gross. Yeah, it's going to be gross. We got to do it, guys. Okay, here it is. He turned himself in and was booked into the Ray Bunn County Detention Center on Friday. The Mountain Judicial Circuit District Attorney said that Nichols was granted a thirty-two thousand five hundred dollar bond with conditions. Oh, it's so specific. He's like, I only got three thousand two hundred fifty dollars in my account. What can you make my bond at? Okay. Just kidding, allegedly. I'm just joking, guys. The conditions of this bond are that he not be involved in any law enforcement activity in his capacity as sheriff. Well, thank goodness. That ought to be a freaking no-brainer for this no-brainer. Okay. Dang, I got all messed up there. Got mad at that guy for a second. Okay. According to the jail records, he is no longer an active inmate in the detention center. Oh, he's an inactive inmate. He's actively at home watching the Bad Apple Report. Hey, goofball. Details on the specific incident have not yet been released. It's going to be so good, you guys. It's going to have something to do with his fang, allegedly, I presume. Him indecently using that fang of his and him smiling about it. Allegedly. Jay... Terry Norris is the executive director of the Georgia Sheriff's Association. Whoa! The Sheriff's Association sent a letter to the Governor Brian Kemp Friday asking him to form a panel of two sheriffs and a state attorney general. The panel would investigate any potential wrongdoing and make a rec 
recommendation to the governor. Oh, wait a second. That panel would investigate any potential wrongdoing and make a recommendation to the governor. <laughs> this person has to have their day in court, but obviously there was probable cause to make an arrest. So we're acting on that at this point, Norris said. It lessens the public's confidence in law enforcement in general. Okay. This person has to have their day in court, but obviously there was probable cause to make an arrest. So we're acting on that at this point, Norris said. Oh, it lessens the public's confidence in law enforcement in general and the office of sheriff specifically. There's another dent in that public's trust in our profession. Ooh, a dent. More like a You know, according to the Georgia Peace Officer Standards and Training Council, also known as POST, ooh, they're cool with their acronyms. Nichols, the GBI, and the Raybun County Sheriff's Office have 15 days to report his arrest. If the governor rules to suspend Nichols, then Post could be chose, oh, could choose to revoke any certifications. His Post records show he's had more than 2,700 hours of training in subjects like sex crimes, investigation, risk management, ethics, and professionalism. I bet he slept through all that training. And I'm not alleging that. I'm guaranteeing to you. He he had his ha- one hand down his pants the whole time. That sheriff. Ooh, this sex training's pretty fun. I'm serious. Look at this. If you, look, according to the sheriff's biography, Nichols joined the sheriff's office in 1998 as a jailer. Okay. Oh lordy, you guys. He then became a dispatcher, deputy sheriff, and patrol division agent. He was also chief of police in Baldwin, Georgia, his biography added. Oh, Georgia has had other sheriffs lose their jobs due to criminal misconduct. Clayton County Sheriff Victor Hill just lost an appeal last month. He was convicted of civil rights violations last year. Beckley County Sheriff resigned after he was convicted of assaulting Judge Glenda Hatchett. Whoa, these crazy, crazy sheriffs. Nichols may face suspension at the state level, but he's also in the middle of a runoff campaign to win a third term as sheriff. He garnered the second most votes in May 21. Bunch of knuckleheads in that county. Former Raybun County Deputy Mark Geralds received 45% of the vote. Oh, I'm sure he's a winner too. Which pits him and Nichols in the runoff on June 28th. The race was featured in the Republican ballot. And since there's no opposition, the winner of the runoff will win the sheriff's race. Oh, that's wonderful, folks. We're, We're led by idiots. But as if we didn't already know that, Nichols is still allowed to run for office despite being arrested. In an afternoon update, the Raybun County Sheriff's Office announced Major Beth Dan Darnell as their acting sheriff. Oh, Beth, come on, Darnell. According to the office, she has been employed with them for 14 years. I bet she's a real winner, too. Beth, you look like a real winner. I bet you're a real winner, Beth. Okay, that's what we've got, folks, on that guy. But let me just tell you something. Look at this guy. He was a jailer first. Now he's been a sheriff for many, many years. That is a certifiable creep. If you can't tell that by looking right at him, I'm a legend. You're a nut, okay? So everybody that works with this guy already knew it. Everybody that ever has ever voted for this guy, yeah, that's right. All those goofballs in that county, bunch of goobers. Well, get, 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 goobers, Ray, Bur- Ray Bun knuckleheads. That's right. That's it. And we're going to wrap the Bad Apple Report today with a story that shall never grow stale. But it's about a bad apple that indeed shall grow stale. His career is done. A Florida panhandle sheriff on Friday fired a deputy who fatally shot an airman at his home while holding a handgun pointed to the ground, saying the deputy's life was never in danger and he should not have fired his weapon. Okaloosa County Sheriff Eric Aiden fired Deputy Eddie Duran, who fatally shot senior airman Roger Forston on May the 3rd after responding to a domestic violence call and being directed to Forston's apartment. Duran shot Forston, age 23, multiple times in two seconds after he opened his door. Forston was holding his legally owned gun in his right hand, body camera video shows. It was pointed directly at the ground. Forston was black. Duran, 39, listed himself as Hispanic on the voter registration. A sheriff's internal affairs investigation release Friday concluded that Mr. Forston did not make any hostile attacking movements. And therefore, the deputy's use of force, his use of deadly force, was not objectively reasonable. Outside law enforcement experts have also said that an officer cannot shoot only because a possible suspect is holding a gun and there is no threat. 
This tragic incident should have never occurred, Aiden said in a statement. The objective facts do not support the use of deadly force as an appropriate response to Mr. Forston's actions. Mr. Forston did not commit any crime. By all accounts, he was an exceptional airman and individual. No criminal charges have been filed, but a Florida Department of Law Enforcement investigation is ongoing. Duran did not return. A voicemail left at a number listed to him. Email and phone messages seeking comment from his attorney, John Whitaker, were not immediately returned. According to the Internal Affairs Report, Officer Duran, former Officer Duran, former Deputy Duran, told investigators that when Forston opened the door, he saw aggression in the airman's eyes. He said he fired because I'm standing there thinking I'm about to get shot. I'm about to die. It's him or me at this point, and I need to, I need to act as opposed to react. He told investigators, "It's him or me." Wow. Attorney Ben Crump, who is representing Forston's family, said in a statement that Duran's firing is a step forward, but it's still not full justice for Roger and his family. The actions of this deputy were not just negligent; they were criminal. Crump said. Saba Williams. President of the Okaloosa County NAACP applauded Aiden's actions. We appreciate the internal affairs investigation has shown and what the sheriff has done to this point, Williams said to the Associated Press. We don't think this is the end of it, obviously. He said the NAACP has a good relationship with the Republican sheriff. Some of us may have wanted things to happen a lot quicker, but I know due diligence has to take place, Williams said. Duran is a law enforcement veteran. His career beginning as a military police officer in the Army, and don't forget the guy we were reported on earlier, he was hired by the Okaloosa Police Department in 2015 after his military discharge. Hmm. He joined the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office in, 20, in 2019, but resigned two years later. Oh, he rejoined the Sheriff's Office 11 months ago. Very interesting. The apartment complex where Forston lived is about eight miles from Herbert Field, where Forston was assigned to the 4th Special Operations Squadron as a special missions aviator serving on an AC-130J Ghost Rider gunship. One of his roles was to load the plane's 30mm and 105mm cannons during battle. He earned an air medal with combat device, which is typically awarded after 20 flights in a combat zone or for conspicuous valor or achievement of a single mission. He was an exceptional person, he was. The events leading to the shooting began shortly after 4 p.m. on May 3rd when the tenant who lived near Forston in the Fort Walton's Beach, Elan's apartments, called the management office and said she heard a sound like an argument was coming from his apartment. Okay, listen, you guys, we all watched the video and we all saw this. I'm not going to read through this entire thing. We know what happened. And I'll tell you right now, Duran made a decision and it was a deadly decision, but I believe that he made that decision because it was in his heart to do so. Okay. He's a bad apple. He's gone from the force. And whatever criminal charges are brought against him, I look forward to seeing and I look forward to reporting on to you. Thanks for watching the Bad Apple Report today and every day right here at Home on the Range. You guys are awesome. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow right here at Home on the Range.